When getting started with HardOps, one of the main things that users have questions about is how to manage multiple bevels and booleans at the same time. So in order to set this example up, I'm already inside of box cutter and we will just draw a box going across, but I will press shift to shift it to live and we'll just tap into edit mode and I'll press two at the top of my keyboard to go into ed edge mode and we'll select this edge and control click mark in order to begin beveling. I'll press one in order to bevel this at a profile of 0.5 and then we can tap out of edit mode and select the main shape and we maybe decided that we actually want a bevel going along this region. So we tap into edit mode where the shape is unmodified due to being non-destructive and if we press Q we can actually add a bevel by just either left mouse clicking if there's no bevel present or control clicking on bevel inside of your add modifiers. However, mark also is a bit of a super tool in which you can control click it in order to just quickly bevel. Let's say that you decided that you also want to bevel the other side at the same time as a logical person possibly would want to. If we were to go back in our queue menu with both of these edges selected and control click mark, we can see that we'll actually net the selection in between. We can actually mitigate this bug in Blender, which isn't really a bug, but definitely is something that I wish didn't happen. We can just select each of these edges now and just control click mark and put an edge in between with this edge in between and actually bevel each of these sides. And that's one way of getting around it. However, I don't even want to create this fake edge in the middle. To be honest, I actually only need to control click mark on one side in order to bevel this. And if we come back into object mode, we can see that these changes didn't even make it all the way through. And if I expand on my modifier panel, you can actually see that I have my boolean and then I have my bevel. So the boolean is absolutely destroying the vertex group and that is what's causing this to happen. And to show this in action, we can actually go under bevel in the Q menu in object mode. And once launched, we can see that the bevel is the second modifier in the stack. By holding shift and actually scrolling upwards, we can see that it's now the first modifier in the stack, which also changed in the modifier panel over on the right. And we can see that now we're able to begin modifying this non-destructively the way that you would hope. In order to further expand on this, we can go in edit mode and we can select this edge and this edge and control click mark again in order to bevel this one, except this time I'll opt to give it one segment and we'll press one in order to set the profile to 0.5, but also set the auto smooth to 30, which will help this show up a little easier. So if we go back into object mode, you can see that this bevel also had the same issue where due to being placed after the Boolean, its data also got destroyed due to intersecting with that particular region. So if we press Q again in object mode and we go under bevel, we can just hold shift, scroll up once, and now we have this mirror taking place. And if we control scroll, we can actually jump to the first bevel and adjust that one at the same time. So it's a really nice way to non-destructively get this under control. However, we can take this up a notch. Uh, previously, I talked about how I didn't want an edge in the middle just for me to be able to bevel the other side. That is because I wanted to press Alt X and bring up the mirror tool, but instead of mirroring using new mirror, we're gonna press X, which will reset to default, setting us to modifier, local, and active origin, and we'll just click on the side that we wanna keep, and now we've mirrored this, and we still have all of our bevels live, and we can go in, select this shape, adjust its bevel, select this shape, and adjust its bevel. So whenever it comes to bevel and discussing bevel control, we can't really go very far without talking about the Control Shift B bevel helper. Right now I'm bringing it up in a simpler format because once we begin stacking up bevels, it'll definitely begin looking a lot more complex. Uh, one of my favorite things about the bevel helper is the divided and multiply symbols on the side of the width. By clicking these, you're able to quickly multiply your number to just quickly jump it up to double what it was or half of what it previously was which is just a real nice way to make very large creative changes on the fly um, there's no end to the amount of jobs i've been on where they've told me hey can you make the bevels larger could you make the bevels smaller and because of that this has been integrated very deeply into my workflow personally as well so we'll select this shape, and the next thing is we want to actually put a bevel on top of all of this. So I'll press Q, and we'll just 
control click bevel, which as you can see from the tool tip, will add a new bevel at an angle of 30. So we'll press one in order to just change the auto smooth, getting things to shade just right. And we can see, this, see the shading breaking down a little bit on the side here. So I'll press Q and we'll alt click sharpen in order to put a weight at normal. And if we collapse all our modifiers, you can kind of see the stack that we have created here. In fact, I want to make sure mirror is placed after the bevel. So that way we have bevel, bevel, boolean, bevel. And this bevel doesn't have anything to do with vertex groups, so it's fine with the boolean being in there, just wrecking up the place. In fact, as long as it's after the two V group bevels, everything's fine with me. So the next thing I want to show is the ability to uh, basically insert a cube and by selecting the cube and shift selecting the main shape, you have a Q menu option for basically difference. And if we hover over difference and we look at our tool tip, we can see that there's an option in here for control click to basically sort bypass. And in order to show sort bypass, I have to go into the control tilde hops helper and just make sure that under, um, I believe, bull options that we have bull bevel step off. And this will actually show you what the traditional sort bypass was. We select the shape, we select the main shape, and whenever we cut in, instead of placing it inside of the Boolean, we can actually see it bypass the sort. And if we didn't have it on, we would actually get a result similar to that. So just to show kind of what you're getting whenever you're using hops without uh, bull bevel step being on. However, in later releases, we actually have it set to something called B-stepping, which is the following. So if we control click this, we can actually set up a Boolean and a bevel at the same time and jump in a bevel mode to interactively adjust this particular bevel. And so we can select this piece, do the same thing again, just control click difference. In order to do an isolated bevel in this particular region, I accidentally duplicated it. We'll do the same thing here and we'll select the main shape, control click difference in order to set a bevel. And you may notice that I'm not able to go very far with the bevel, and this is because the larger bevel is a constraint on the amount that I'm able to do with this. So in order to give myself even more flexibility, I can bring up our old friend, control shift B, and we see that it's definitely grown a lot bigger now because we've racked up many bevels and bullets at the same time as we're working. However, the one that we want to adjust is the third one in the stack because I remember the first two. And if we look at this, we can see that it's a little bit faceted. So have no fear, we can go in our bevel helper and on the third bevel, we can jump that up to six segments or even 12, which will get us a much nicer result. And we can even double the width, maybe even dial it back a little bit so we don't cause any geometry riots. And we're now able to go in here and just press Q and adjust the bevel and bring this up to a much larger number. So bevel can be a little bit of a balancing act when it comes to using it inside of hard ops because in one place you can get it to work, but in another place it could definitely begin to get problematic, which is why you would then want to press Control Shift B in order to bring this up and just get that perfect. But really at the end of your model, the goal of parametric control isn't exactly a reality in Blender itself due to um, the derived mesh system taking so long for it to um, calculate you know with all these modifiers in place. So in order to continue we'll add a plane and I'll scale this plane up and we'll add some solidification and we'll shift select the main shape and control click difference in order to put a bevel just on the specific boolean level that we're creating. If I want to adjust the thickness, I can press Q, mod scroll once backwards, press Q again, and adjust the solidification because that is basically the job of mod scroll. When you scroll it backwards is to give you back your last cutter. But to continue on, we will shift right click to place our cursor here and we'll just place a box and the reason that I'm placing boxes is because what I'm showing you is something that uh, basically uh, box cutter isn't capable of doing yet. A lot of ideas that we take over to box cutter are things that we uh, really perfect in hops and kind of play with in the sandbox to get to a perfected state and then from there we can begin talking about um, the process of actually getting it into box cutter itself but we definitely want to 
build box cutter up in a way where everything is methodically added and well thought out and the tool isn't hastily put together in a state that could create unneeded instability and frustration to the user. Um, due to the amount of studios using these tools, we consider them um, professional tools. So uh, a, a large amount of um, pressure is on us to you know maintain their continued usage and maintenance. And for that reason, it's sometimes easier for us to just, um, just maintain these tools and ensure that they're in the current state, but working well. So right here at this moment, I just did a simple difference, which placed this difference on the same level as this difference. And I could show that by pressing Q and just adjusting the bevel for these two regions. So I just wanted to go over that real quick while I was going off on a side tangent, but we can still shift A, place a shape. And let's say we wanted to actually be, be troublesome and put this piece here. We will select both of these control click difference and it almost worked out for us we'll press uh, control numpad 7 look at this underneath and just move this just right because of the um, amount of segments we have going on in this region things are getting a little bit spicy in fact we can roll back that pulley one more time to bring it back we can scale it up maybe s and c and usually with an area that starts to get a little problematic with the geo, not even joking, I will just go in and slash it out and then deal with it on an individual level. Sometimes it's just easier to just put a playful little slash. We can select everything and just control click material scroll, just scroll it through a material. In fact, if I wanted to actually rip the top of this off, the easiest way to do it would probably be to just place a cube And we'll select both of these difference and we'll just roll the wheel back, get our slash back and do a bull shift to shift this into its own shape and then go ahead and give that its own material as well. But that is it in a nutshell. I just wanted to do a quick video talking about how you're able to stack bevels and booleans non-destructively. Another way to also demonstrate this concept in action is with a brand new file. We can just press Q and just add a bevel and we can just roll up our segments. And then if I quickly wanted to add a new bevel on top of this, I could either control or control shift click, but either control or control shift click on bevel to add a new bevel or just under operations, just jump to step and you'll have added a new bevel at 50% of the previous bevel level, meaning that you can just very easily stack non-destructive bevels and just get in there and begin cutting on the next level without further issue. But the purpose of this was to talk about V groups and their placement with booleans and how to basically use B step in a uh, small and controlled fashion. So hopefully this video has um, provided some insight as to how to better use these particular functions inside of hard ops. They are a little lesser known, but just know that you know, hovering over any of these functions will show you a tool tip, which I took great care in writing. We will just control click in order to give this its own bevel level individually, which will even start you at a half bevel just to make it congruent with the previous level to try to minimize on user issues. So to show that again, we just control click difference in our two object bull menu. And here we are absolutely failing. So let's uh, duplicate that and just try it again. And here we are with our desired result. I don't know what happened there. I guess I got lucky and hotlined something I couldn't see, but that is it in a nutshell. With that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.